Good evening. Welcome to the August 8th Troy City Council meeting. Uh, is Pastor Pennington in the audience? That was who was to give our um, invocation. Not here? Okay, uh, then I will call on our uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mary Kerwin, to give our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. We are the stewards of America, her ideals and institutions, her cities and natural beauty. We are entrusted to understand America's past and guide her future to create an ever more just America that is secure and free, abundant and caring for all her inhabitants. We are thankful for the freedom to worship, to speak our minds, to change our minds, to chart our lives, to work for a better world. We are thankful for the freedom to celebrate this day in America. Each of us is entitled to a place at the table. In this we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, for our invocation. Uh, may we have the roll call, please, Mrs. Speaker? <laughs> Mayor Schilling? Here. Councilmember Beltramini? Here. Fleming? Here. Howerlack? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Here. Councilmember McGinnis? Here. Slater? Here. Quorum present. Uh, we begin this evening with uh, certificates of recognition and special presentations. And it's my pleasure to uh, go down to the front to uh, do our first uh, presentation on behalf of City Council. So I'll do that at this time. And if I might have uh, Kathleen Russ our library director come forward. Now this recognition uh, this evening presentation made to Kathleen Russ is from the uh, Michigan Library Association and it is for the 2011 Lolita D. Bayan Award Honoree. And I'm going to read from the letter from the chairperson, who is Margaret Auer, the chairperson of the Michigan Library Association Awards. And she is the dean of the University of Libraries Instructional Design Studio at the University of Detroit Mercy. And uh, she writes to congratulate Kathy on being selected as the Michigan Library Association 2011 Lolita D. Fion Award Honoree. What a great testimonial this award is to your library career and the leadership you have provided for the City of Troy citizens over the last 18 months. The Michigan Library Association Awards Committee members were impressed with your letters of support, especially your communication efforts during a very difficult time in the City of Troy. You have encountered a challenge faced by few librarians. In facing this challenge, the writer of a letter support states, and I quote, she has rallied to create an atmosphere with the remaining staff that is both honest and encouraging. She established new ways to communicate with staff each day to share information in a constantly changing landscape, to quell rumors and establish solid communication with staff to share with patrons, end of quote. It takes a great deal of effort to keep communication on a solid ground when under such adversity. The uh, award is presented uh, to Kathy Russ and uh, it is of course well deserved and she has with her this evening many of her 
fellow librarians and supporters who recognize Kathy Russ's achievement. But to be uh, chosen out of all the librarians in the Michigan Library Association is quite an honor for Kathy. If you make me cry, I won't be able to talk, and then <laughs> just headlines will read library director sobs at city council meeting. Um, I think most of you know that I've had a 32-year relationship with the Troy Public Library, and I walked in there as a 10-year-old in 1979, and I thought it was the best library I'd ever seen, and we'd moved around a lot, and I had seen a lot of libraries, and I love that place. I still think it is the best library in Michigan, and in the country, and in the world. And while it is absolutely an honor to be recognized by my colleagues and by the Michigan Library Association, um, what really means more to me are the letters of support that were written by friends of the library, the library advisory board, library staff, and the people who use the Troy Public Library. Um, it just, it, it's extremely humbling to me that you think so well of me, and I will do my very best to do my job and to keep your trust. I really have to thank two groups of people um, who, you know, I don't think anybody stands alone, and these are the people who have really kept me standing. Um, the employees of the city of Troy, from department heads at, at really at every level of this organization, you have been professional, you have been courteous, and you have been unfailingly kind and patient with all my requests for information, and um, I just really thank you for all your support. I absolutely have to thank the staff of the Troy Public Library, with whom I really feel like I share this award. Um, the staff stepped up, they met the challenges, and I think through teamwork we were able to provide this community with service, um, even better service, because we just really wanted to show you that we cared. So staff of the Troy Library, this, this is also for you. Um, I just think that if I've done anything worthy, to be worthy of this award, it's because I had so many wonderful people um, in the Troy community to serve, and so many wonderful people helping me out. So thank you very much. Certainly a wonderful way to start our meeting with an award that is uh, certainly uh, well deserved. Now we have no carryover items or public hearings and so we're going to go right to public comments so I have to count here, excuse me just a moment. <clears throat> and there are 13 people that have signed up to speak so we'll keep with the uh, five minute uh, time span. Uh, for those of you that are new uh, to the council chambers, this is for comments on agenda items or items that are not on the agenda. Uh, and uh, the time limit is five minutes per person. And uh, we'll begin, uh, and I'll call the first five people, uh, and then we'll call the next five, etc. Okay? So we begin with Janice Daniels, Carol Berhali. Gordon Shepke, Christopher Kaluza, Ed uh, Grzanke. If those people would come forward, please. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If you want me to get started, I, or should I wait? Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, I, I, good evening, Ma Madam Mayor and Council and management and staff. I uh, wanted to agree that Kathy Russ has behaved very honorably and with great dignity in the past two years when her career was basically at stake. So um, I also commend her and, and appreciate what she's done for the city. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that our Commissioner Bob Goslin. His mother is gravely ill. She's only been given a couple of weeks to live. His, his father and his aunt are in the hospital and they're seriously ill. So the Goslin family is experiencing great 
um, tragedy right now, and I wanted to extend my personal condolences and my prayers for their safety and their strength in these coming days that are going to be difficult for them. Uh, beyond that, I um, went to church yesterday, and I don't know, Mayor Schilling, if sometimes you go to church and sometimes it just seems like the sermon is being spoken right to you. And that's the way I felt yesterday. And the uh, subject of the sermon was forgiveness. So I um, believe that Jesus wants us all to forgive each other for our transgressions against each other, and I hope to uh, be an integral part of the community as we move forward. You have your tax increase, we have our library, and uh, now let's move forward and uh, make the Troy a wonderful community like it is in which to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we'll hear from Carol. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Okay. Good evening, Madam Mayor, City Council members, Troy administration, residents of our great city. Two weeks ago, when I spoke to you, I said that the idea that Troy would close its library was inconceivable to me. I realized only after the election last Tuesday how profoundly I felt those words. I am so elated that we have saved this great gem whose value is, is really incalculable. Whenever I go to the library, I feel its importance and vitality as a focal point of our community. The parking lot is filled, people are coming and going. Art of Local Artists covers the wall. I could go on and on for much longer than five minutes, you know. But my primary reason for being here tonight, um, the second time in my life when I have addressed the City Council, um, is that I want to express my deep gratitude to those Troy residents who expressed on August the 2nd, beyond any doubt, that they too share a deep commitment to our library and to its value in our community. I am grateful to those City Council members who persevered to make this election possible. I also thank the League of Women Voters, the Troy Chamber of Commerce, the Troy School Board um, who endorsed the library millage. I was deeply moved in the weeks preceding this election by the sense of true community that I felt among and with residents of our great city. Further, I see this positive vote as an optimistic step toward a brighter future for our city. I hope that as a true community, we can work t together toward the betterment of our city. I believe that we can weather the current economic storm that will, it seems, continue for some time to come. I call for a commitment to honest, open, and sincere dialogue in the weeks and months to come. I challenge each resident of Troy to consider with the respect that each of us deserves as human beings, the statements of others, even though we may not agree with the ideas that they express. I urge each resident to try to find common ground, to be willing to compromise, and to be flexible. These characteristics are the foundation of our democratic system, not signs of weakness. If we can do these things, I believe that we can be a stronger and more united community in the future. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from Gordon Chepke. Gordon? Good evening. Anyway, um, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Gordon Shepke. I live at 328 Paragon in Troy. At this time, I'd like to thank Martin Howellack and uh, Wade Fleming for the courageous job that you've done against uh, quite impossible odds to uh, uh, uphold your fiduciary responsibilities to the city of Troy. You've been nothing but uh, uh, very honest and open uh, with all your dealings and uh, um, uh, trying to come up and, and make the, the, the city run as efficiently as possible. So I appreciate your efforts on our behalf. Mayor, I've got a little bit of a problem with you and the way you haven't been attending your downtown development authority meetings. You and the city manager, from uh, if the records are correct, um, sh really aren't upholding your responsibility, uh, your oath of office, if you would have that, that so be, to uh, protect the, the citizens of Troy. We need your protection and your input on that council. That council's been, that downtown development authority's been running wild for a long time and not several times I've gotten up here and said that we ought to close that downtown development authority down and have been told that they, they have too many bonds 
bonds and we can't close them down, but we can certainly defund them and keep them from any of these, any further uh, of these uh, uh, notorious spending uh, sprees that they go on. We need your help and the city manager to bring them under control. So that's what I've got to say about that. Uh, I'm glad the election is over. There was a lot of, uh, whether you were voted yes or whether you voted no, we all wanted the library. Uh, the library has been an integral part of the city for, for several years and, and a very necessary part of our community. We just didn't, we don't like the way it was being handled. The money was there and, we, and it could have been done a lot better. And we're sorry to the, uh, the library and she's done a fantastic job. Uh, the way the library has been held hostage for such a long period of time and it has got to stop. We have to have more unity in the city. I agree with the lady that was on ahead of us and we got to stop spending all of this money on special elections and consultants and and um, what I consider some of the biased or not uh, mailings not telling the full story. Uh, we're having trouble in Washington with telling us that we have to spend more money or default on bonds or do this or that and we're having trouble in the city of Troy saying if you don't give me money for this or money for that we're going to do something with the snow plowing we're going to have to curtail that or we're going to have to close the library. I think that as families we all have to live within our budgets and I think as as a council and a city and an administration you need to do the same thing and and I'm, I'm going to challenge you in the future that you learn to do that and, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Christopher Thank you, members of the City Council. I'd like to give you a little bit of a uh, history lesson, I guess, within my discipline of political science. Back in the 1970s, there was a bit of a fight between two individuals, Miller and Citroen, okay? The original article that came out was by Miller, and it discussed political trust. And what essentially he did was he was just trying to measure at the time, because as you know, in the United States, that there was a lot of political upheaval to see how much people really trusted the political institutions. Well, what he found was quite surprising. People apparently had no trust in the political institution whatsoever. And essentially, he at one point even went on to say that he expected that there was going to be this revolution in this country. Well, we know that obviously did not happen. Then along came Citroen after reviewing the paper and said, this is absolutely ridiculous. This isn't obviously what's going to happen. And he said that the measurements that Miller was using, rather than looking at trust in the institution, that they were looking at trust in the incumbents and trust in the people that held office. Now, where am I getting with all of this? My point is, is that as we move forward, please do not take the vote that was done last week as the citizens agreeing with the way that this city council has been continuing on in invoking public policy on this city. Continue to listen to the citizens and please, because I have heard multiple times that there is going to be more considerations for tax increases, that this is not the way to go. People were worried that they were going to lose the library. This was not a fact that people wanted to see more taxes. This was because they wanted to save a library. What I did, last week is I looked at the cities in this area and I took data from 30 different communities. What's been stated is that Troy has a very low tax rate, mill rate, comparison to the communities around us. So I performed regression analysis using OLS, which is ordinarily least squares. What we found was, was that cities that had high population and also cities that had high personal income had very low mill rates. For the exact reasons that I've been saying this whole time, it's because they are able to raise revenue with low mill rates. The statistical significance was exceptionally high. The probability of the means being uh, what they were only because of probability were 0 .004 for income and for population it was 0 .022 well below the point zero five that's required within the social sciences to declare statistical significance. So what I'm simply saying is, please be very careful, please listen to what the people are saying, and no tax increases. Thank you. 
Okay, next we'll hear from Ed. And Ed, come up. I'm going to call the next five people, but before you start, okay. Susan Martin, John Tegel, Jeannie Stein, Marvin Reinhardt, and Richard Peters. Would those people come up, please, next? Good evening, Ed. How are you? Good. How about you? Good. Thank you. I just want to congratulate you on, their, on your great win. Uh, it took six ballots to, uh, to get your win. It, it, it seems like you guys were holding a gun to the city of Troy, the, the taxpayers in Troy, and, and going for the last minute just like, a, like the president did with his uh, health care bill. You finally, you finally got the sheeple in line and they, they voted because they were afraid the library was going to close. And then to hold it in, in August, look what happened to a AAA bond rating. Oh, wait, that's not you guys. That's Peters. I'm sorry. I was at his office earlier. Uh, the, uh, there were different ways to, to uh, get the money for the, for the library. You had $12 million there to use, but you chose to uh, threaten the people. Uh, so I'd like to offer another proposal that on the November election. And the wording can probably change a little bit. But whereas, now therefore, be it resolved, and be it further resolved, that in the city of Troy we will rescind the 0 0.7 mil tax on the people and promise never to do it again. So I'd like to propose that go on the next ballot. Also, when, when, you, when you talked uh, last week, or two weeks ago, the 401k. That was a brow-raising moment in my, in my estimation. The 10% norm is not, in the, in the private sector, is not, is not the norm for a, for a match, for the 10% match. It's 2.1% is the norm in the private sector. So if this is, if it's the norm for the public sector, then you guys need to cut a little bit more, and maybe that would have been enough to raise money for the school library. But you, 5%, you guys, the budget came down. But the people in Troy who, who had jobs or, or who lo the people lost their jobs, there are other people who kept their jobs but took a bigger cut. And I, for one, I mentioned that last time, took a much bigger cut than the 5%. And I had to make do with what I had. I couldn't raise taxes. I couldn't go back to my employer and ask for more money. And I couldn't go back to, the, to you guys to ask for a tax cut. So I, I think there's different ways you should have done it. And you need to cut, the city needs to be cut even more. 5%, you need to go maybe 10 or 20%. And then maybe you can make a help the city of tax help the city of Troy taxpayers. And then that the uh, party you had afterwards did we pay for that or was that part of the library budget? High fiving there at Joe Cools. So I just wondered if that was part of the. You don't have to tell me now. You can tell me in the rebuttal. But did you guys did we pay for that or was that that come out of your out of your pocket or was that out of the library fund? Thank you. Next, we'll uh, hear from uh, Sue Martin. We each picked up our own check, sir. Thanks. Nine months of work, hundreds of volunteers, a core group of people who gave up nearly every Saturday and several nights a week, too, families who were patient and understanding, vacations that were postponed, job searches put on hold. All of this led to the wonderful victory that we enjoyed last week. We did this. We saved our library. We are moms and dads, sisters and brothers, children and grandparents. We are Republicans, Democrats, independents, conservatives, and liberals. But you know what? None of those labels matter. We proved that. We took the politics out of our library, and we told those who are seeking only to view it through that lens that we're watching very carefully. We left the heart in our community. We changed the conversation in Troy. We became a voice for the people looking for honesty, integrity, and truth in this city. We are all of us, and we are Troy. And what is that? I told you a few weeks ago, a top-rated city with top-rated services, schools, and safety, because Troy is also fiscally responsible. You don't get where we were with foolish, reckless spending. Troy is a community in which we want to raise our families and a community to which we want people and other businesses to move. And saving our library was only the first step. The work is not done. 
Now we look forward to November and the election of a new council, and it will be vital that we elect those who will continue to keep Troy the solid city that it is and always has been. And where we're going to say no to those who seek only to forward personal political agendas that serve narrow-minded political ideologies. We must continue this conversation that we started nine months ago. And if you wish to become part of this revolution, then you can join Save Troy at www.savetroy.org. We'll take your help. But finally, I want to end with a thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you that came with us on this road to victory. We made people around the world literally stand up and take notice. But more importantly, we helped every person and every business in this city by restoring the spirit of Troy. Thank you. Next we'll hear from John Tagle. Mayor, Council, Good evening. I'm here tonight uh, not only as a resident but also as a uh, uh, board chairman for the Troy Chamber of Commerce. And I just want to say congratulations to this community for all of the efforts of all of the people. Um, um, but more importantly, I want to uh, look forward and I want to engage the stakeholders in this community to see what the library of the future is going to look like. I'm sure it's going to look a lot different. I was, I've been in front of you before speaking of different alliances that I think can really look into that and make it a different entity than we've known to become the 21st century library. Um, and I also want to, I think there's some positive momentum that's, that's starting to upswell in the community. I really hope that this positive story gets conveyed uh, over and over again because there's plenty of, of bad press out there and we, we as not only citizens of, of this city but of this state, we need to start thinking in a more positive area and, and moving in that direction. Thank you. Thank you. Next we'll hear from Jeannie Stein. Good evening, former Mayor, city council members. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm representing the Friends of the Troy Public Library. And I'm actually speaking for Ron, Rhonda Hendrickson, the president of the Troy Public or the president of the Friends, who um, would be presenting the address herself this evening, except for the fact that unfortunately she is in the emergency room at Beaumont Hospital with her father. So on behalf of the executive board of the Friends, I would like to thank the voters of Troy, library supporters, and the hundreds of individuals who worked for two years in a myriad of ways to save the library from closure. The importance of this civic asset is unquestionable, and we can now move forward with confidence to serve the children, the seniors, the students, and all the people of this community who have come to rely on the library as an integral part of their lives in this city. I'm both honored and humbled to have stood shoulder to shoulder with citizens who had never before engaged in a civic cause, give freely of their time, their enthusiasm, their energy to make a difference in something that benefits us all as a community. To each of you, I thank you. In addition, the Friends would like to congratulate our library director, Kathy Russ, on her much-deserved award from the Michigan Library Association. And this award, as you undoubtedly know, is for outstanding professionalism in her field. The citizens of Troy should know that Kathy has shown that above and beyond. She has managed to provide excellent customer service in a cloud of closure for two years. She has handled questions and complaints with honesty and goodwill. She has the respect of her peers for her dedication and unyielding focus on her job. Especially when you consider she thought she was losing her job. She represents her profession and our city with dignity and integrity and we should all be proud of her accomplishments. Thank you, Kathy, and congratulations. Henry Ford once said that coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress, and working together is success. Our community right now has the opportunity to work together for the success of Troy. We need to employ the five C's 
civility, communication, commitment, compromise, and community. The Friends of the Troy Public Library have never wavered in our belief in the importance of our library and its core value to our community. We have promoted it and supported it for over 53 years, and we will continue to do so. Now we will move, move forward. The Friends are again accepting donations, and after some ho housekeeping, we will reopen the bookshop right after Labor Day. We will once again be working with the library to find ways to help support their, e their efforts to serve customers. We're hoping that all of the library supporters out there will consider becoming members of the Friends in the coming weeks so that we can continue to be involved in the library's future success. Thank you, Jeannie. Uh, next, we'll hear from Marvin Meinhardt. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I can't caveat to my last week's comment. The reason I say what I said because of J6. Okay, if you look at J6, that's a simple yes or no. So the city to pay $500 not to answer a Freedom of Information Act. Okay, that's that's the reason I got to do what I do because you guys refuse to answer those things. Because I've already been in Haven Week for five weeks trying to put one in. Second of all, I don't want to break you guys' bubble, but we're right along with the boys, Iowa as far as cost of living goes. So as far as our super rich city goes, we're along with Des Moines. So quit blowing smoke up to these people because everybody could go on Google and find out what cities we're associated with. I didn't give that piece of paper because I, I lost it. But, you know, I don't have enough copies of it. But the biggest thing is the J6 part. When you guys approve it, I'm going to get a thousand of those things. I'm going to hire a lawyer and he's going to get $500 every time you say no. Very simple. I can work the system just like you can. Okay? Second of all, I voted no, not because I didn't want the library, because I know there's money in the budget like these two guys. Because even President Obama says there's a 10% waste fraud in every city budget. And what is our city budget? 100 million? That's $10 million that even President Obama says we're here. And these people that say their trust is not political, why do they call all these political names? Why, why, why should that impress anybody? It doesn't impress me. I'm an American. I think anybody that wears a title like that's a jerk. Because you've got to defend Troy. Don't worry about you or Slater or Barton. Troy has to be defended. And I tell you, I took a poll from the yes vote people coming out because they come to me because they recognize me on that set. And most of them had to held their nose. They don't know. They had to vote yes because they said a city without a library is not a city and they held their nose and they wondered how much other abuse does this city have and they all laughed about the new tax because Troy's going to be New Britain. Like Britain, you know, they got tax for this, tax for this, tax for that. We're going to be like Britain. So I said, don't worry about it. We got all these cultures and most of them come from the British Commonwealth so they're used to paying all these extra taxes. And I talked to some of the Indies and they thought 16 mile is going to be included raising taxes. No, just the homeowners. Because the homeowners are so rich in this town that if a business got fi 500 employees over there, they can freely use our library services like they live in the city. They can live anywhere. So that's how, how generous we are. So when you people keep talking about we, the people voted yes, that was a pity vote. And they said everybody out there is going to be gone. Now, I just, re I just interview these people. I don't come up with this stuff. So you think half the stuff I come up with is no. I field phones all the time. Like that Michigan Art Studio. When they thought about moving to Troy six months ago, I already talked to the board of directors and told them what I felt about Troy. You understand? I, I do that. I got a website that collects everything that Troy's mentioned, including what he prints. And I can take off whatever he puts on and put my byline right next to his. Okay. So if that's the game you guys want to play, I'm up to it, okay? Because I got nothing, hey, and my uncle lived to 98 years old. So I'm only 62, so I'll be here after you're gone, okay? So you guys want to keep, keep pretending I'm not in this town, that's fine. But I knock on doors of every business in this city at least once a year and ask them, what could I do if I was mayor for this town? 
and they have never heard of you guys. In fact, I can't even ask a restaurant to say, you guys even visit any of our restaurants. Don't you guys care about this city? If I was mayor, wherever I went, there'd be a photographer. I'm in this restaurant. I'm over there restaurant. But no, you guys find. And then we get five minutes every two weeks, and in three, if there's too many people, we get three minutes, and then people like me get irate because I got 50 questions that I got to field every day, and these guys feel it on Facebook. Okay, I guarantee it because I'm not with a TCU. I'm not with anybody. In fact, anytime you got anybody profits off this city, I'm at the bar drinking with them. They're buying me drinks, taking your money, and I love it. So the more you do it, the more I drink free. So all I got to say to you guys, you guys are being watched. And, I, and the biggest joke is a 100,000 person city being managed by a part-time guy. It's not his fault. He's doing the best. You told him don't program a library, he did his best. And he's taking the heat for it. Because you guys decided to defund the library and the yes vote, according to most of those people, at least guarantee you're not going to rip that away because they got this much money. So when these guys bragging about the yes vote, they haven't lived in the city. These people a tank com, and I'm going to be fixing those people to tank com. You have a good day. Uh, next, we'll hear from Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters, come up to the mic, but before you start, I'm going to call the last five people, okay? Uh, Tom Crant, Christine Hill, James Savage, and Edward Kempen. Mr. Peters? Good evening, Council, uh, folks, good evening. Of, folks of Troy. Um, First, I just want to say that our hearts go out to the soldiers that uh, perished over the weekend and uh, to all soldiers. Mr. Peters, use the mic because I yeah. want people to hear you. I just say that our hearts go out to the families of the soldiers that died over the weekend and our soldiers that have died in the past, et cetera, in these conflicts. Um, uh, first, I want to congratulate the people of Troy and uh, the opposition for putting up a, a pretty big fight and hopefully uh, we can move on from here and uh, let's thanks for voting for our library um, I got first I want to uh, I guess you call it a narrow-minded agenda here uh, I want to call for a jobs bill based on taxes on the wealthy and I also want to promote wage and price guidelines or controls are necessary across the economy I also want to promote the extension of the strategic oil reserve for one year, from three years to one year. And a new call, uh, all new cars that should have least flex fuel capability, uh, stricter enforcement of the Clean Air Act, and uh, better monitoring of our glacier system because the weather that we've been having has been, you know, most people uh, been unusual. and. Uh, from my own point of view, I, I, I just don't see that oil is in our future. I have some theories, but I'm not going to promote those. But I do hope that we do address some of these issues sooner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from Tom Cran. Good evening, Council Mayor. Good evening. Uh, back in 2008, the voters approved a charter amendment to cap our city taxes. And what they effectively did by voting for that is take on the responsibility for themselves to review the budget and to, uh, and when council decides that since they can't increase the millage, when they, uh, when the council puts forth a ballot question to the citizens, listening to what the citizens ask for, basically to say we're giving you the opportunity to vote on, on a millage increase. Uh, I was very thankful that five members of our council, including Mayor Schilling, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Mary Kerwin, uh, Councilman Dane Slater, and Councilwoman Maureen McGinnis, and Councilwoman uh, Robin Beltramini, all listened to the people and said, look, we've got the responsibility to put uh, the question before the people. And I was very pleased that you did, and just let the voters decide, because that's what they asked for. Uh, Councilman Hauerlach and Councilman Wade Fleming decided not to allow the citizens to have that opportunity, and I think that's a shame. Uh, in conclusion, I just wanted to say that um, I'm sure until this uh, charter amendment is re either rec rescinded, uh, the voters really have to, at this point forward, every time um, the budget comes up, they should review the entire city budget. It's their responsibility. They voted to do that. and. And then when a, a council, whatever members are at the time, uh, put that question before the people if they want to raise their millage, the council's responsibility is to give the citizens that uh, privilege to make a decision. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you. Next, we'll hear from Christine Hill. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here as a longtime resident who would like to thank those of you on council and the majority of Troy voters who did the right thing last week. That yes, millage vote was clearly the result of citizens taking a look at our fraying city services and taking a step toward keeping our wonderful community intact. Troy voters obviously took the time to educate themselves about our revenue problems, our very low millage rate, and the need to step up to save the library, one of our important and necessary entities. I applaud our community, which according to the free press, is revved up about its library and I know also about his future. Thank you, Troy voters. Well done. Thank you. Uh, next we'll hear from James Savage. Good evening, Mayor Schilling. Good evening, members of council. I'm gonna headline my comments tonight, the waste of taxpayer money. Just because it is state or federal money is not justification to waste it. It is still our tax money. Look around, the waste is everywhere. 40 seat smart buses with one passenger. And how smart is that? New sidewalks on Stevenson Highway. In 35 years that I have traveled the Stevenson Highway, I have never seen one pedestrian. Not ever, but we've got so nice new sidewalks. Even a handicap accessible sidewalk onto a gravel road. And I think that's not the only one because uh, Councilman Fleming brought up some cases last week, that, or two weeks ago, where people were wondering what the heck was going on with either was it new sidewalks or destroying sidewalks, I'm not sure. We are told that we have to follow federal guidelines. Federal guidelines say that when stalling or replacing sidewalks, they must meet federal standards. It does not say that you have to dig up perfectly good concrete just to change the color at a cost of $2 million. And then of course, there's the glowing example of waste, the Troy Transit Center. I visited the new transit center in Pontiac. It's not open yet, but it seems to be just right to meet the demand. The location is right downtown on South Woodward. It is a very modest building with no frills, and the terminal serves train, Greyhound, local buses, and it is already built and paid for. There is also a similar center in Royal Oak. So with Pontiac ready to go, and Royal Oak already operating, why do we need one in Troy? If a train has to stop every five to 10 minutes to pick up two or three passengers, you can hardly call it rapid transit. Anyone living in Northwest Troy will have a few minute drive to the Pontiac station. And anyone living in southeast Troy would have only a few minute drive to the Royal Oak Station, and these are already there. Why do we need to spend millions of dollars that's not even started yet on something we don't need? So who supports the Troy Transit Center? Our city management does, because it helps them keep them in their high paid jobs. I have heard one or two persons voice support for it, but I believe those persons are affiliated with political parties. And we have seen what party politics can do. We have been told that the transit center has not cost Troy taxpayers anything. And I dispute that. Who is paying the management and legal department salaries when they are spending time dealing with this? Is that, does that come out of federal funds? And who paid the lobbyists thousands of dollars a month to get something that we don't want? Now I'm wondering, is the federal government 
paying lobbyists to lobby themselves. Don't seem to make much sense. So we still never seem to get these answers as to who pays these people and whether it comes out of taxpayer money. And I believe the reason the administration is pushing this now is because they know that in November we will have a council that will be more accountable to the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ed Kempen will be next. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. We've been uh, disputing uh, the closure of the library for you know quite some time, well over a year. Uh, I think it's a year and a half now. Uh, this has just torn our community apart. And uh, I am thankful that that war seems to be over, aside from maybe a, a budget resolution to uh, modify that so that funding can continue now officially. But uh, I just wanted to share some other information. Uh, the uh, petition drive that we were working on in case this millage didn't pass, uh, right now we're going to uh, retire this petition. Uh, I think that there's some incompatibilities with the passage of the, of the uh, millage so we're just going to let that retire i know a lot of people worked real hard we had over 2,000 petition signatures already collected and appreciate everybody going and helping out doing whatever we can i know we were on opposite sides of the issue on taxation or no taxation to keep our library open but the vast majority of the the public here in troy believes that we do need this library one way or another so appreciate that and uh one other point I want to make is that I am starting a new petition. Uh, this petition is for me to run for city council, so uh, I, I want to let everybody know that it's nothing to be alarmed about. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thanks, Corey. Go ahead. But uh, I, I'm, I am looking forward to uh, running and, and hopefully serving our community. I'm going to continue to work for our community here in Troy. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get along a little bit more with unity as a community and uh, make sure that uh, we're working for what's important to the people here in our cities. Thanks. Thank you. That concludes those that signed up to speak. Uh, and uh, so I'll turn to uh, council and staff if they have any response or reply to public comment at this time. Uh, council members or staff members? Mayor. Councilman Howardock. Uh, just two quick things. One, the, um, in response to Mr. Krent, the, um, the ballot proposal that was actually passed last week was not in accordance with the charter provision but with the state constitution and um, statutory enabling. If we had done a uh, 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 millage request in accordance with the charter, um, it would have actually been a general mill, general operating levy, which is what I would have preferred. On another, on another note, I also want to make a comment about uh, something that happened at last city council meeting. And at the last city council meeting, Sue Martin had made a comment, and then I had responded at, at this particular junction, uh, at this particular point in the meeting. And uh, perhaps I came on a little bit strong, and she sent me an email subsequent to that meeting, and she wanted me to know that her comments with respect to fund balance. And because she was using an example of, of an emergency and an emergency that she had used related to streets and drains. And she wanted me to know that she knew very well that the fund balance was not to be used for streets and drains, but the example was simply that, an example of how an emergency can develop and you need to have sufficient fund balance. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, it, you know, we were in agreement and, and perhaps my comments were a little bit strong in response to to what she said. So I, I'm glad that, you know, there, there's agreement on that. And she had asked that I clarify the record so that, uh, and I'm doing it accordingly. Any, any other council members? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? I think that, um, if, I think that Mr. Kent may have misspoken as well. I believe the vote to put the issue before the voters was actually 6-1. Mr. Fleming had actually spoken about um, looking at a different way of funding but recognized, I, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so please speak, but um, that the community had, through numerous community conversations, 
asked us over and over and over, and whether it was through a survey or through our uh, many community conversations, and every single member of this council did attend that. We heard from residents who asked for a clean vote, just give us a clean vote. Um, there was one speaker earlier who said uh, that this has been before the voters six times. That is not true at all. Um, the only dedicated millage for a, a library as a department of this city was the one that the voters just acclaimed. Uh, we did in 2009, as many of you know, uh, went for general operating millage, uh, much as uh, Councilman, pardon? 2010. Did I say 2000, uh, 2010, pardon me. Uh, general operating millage, we had talked about that the fall before. We had um, put out, and we heard from a resident today, Mr. Shepke, who talked about living within your means. We had put out on the website exactly what that would look like three years forward, so people were, were well aware of what that looked like. It was stunning to have that kind of conversation in a community that had for years seen much growth but we know that we're not seeing that kind of growth anymore. So we put, uh, put that before the voters, that general operating millage did go down. Uh, there was uh, a petition, which is the right of the people for an independent library. There were some copycat petitions that went before the people and that the residents told us that that was confusing. But this is the, very f this is the only time a dedicated millage for this library has come before the people. This is the only vote for the library that's come before the people. I do appreciate um, my colleague, Councilmember Fleming, voting to, to let that go forward before the people. Uh, I'd like to comment, uh, since um, city and the library were accused of spending money on a party election night, uh, that, that the party that occurred was paid for by uh, individuals, uh, their own bills there, and uh, just as other groups have had gatherings uh, election night to look at the results, and there were no city funds expended for that. Uh, but I do have to tell you, it was a happy night for the city of Troy because it was the community that won. Mm -hmm. And it was very pleasant to see that the uh, newscasters who try to remain objective in reporting were, had smiles on their face, whether it was that evening or the next morning, uh, and the other communities that had passed dedicated millages May 3rd uh, for their libraries were also uh, happy. And so uh, my compliments to those folks that uh, realized the value of the library and that knew we needed dedicated, sustained funding for our Troy Public Library. Um, I think that uh, clarification of information is important for people and I would encourage people going forward to continue to go to the city website to look for facts and data if they have questions or concern, to contact staff first before coming to council uh, on an item. Uh, many times things can be clarified or answered um, before the uh, next council meeting, which is, you know, two weeks apart usually. So I encourage people to do that. Is there anyone else on council that wants to have response or reply to public comment? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Fleming? Just to expand on what uh, Mayor Pro Tem Curran was saying, my recollection is during this whole process, I voted against the budget, one reason being because the library was not already included, and I felt that we had the funds to do it. I voted along with Councilman Howlick and his budget proposal that had a budget with the library included, and I voted for that. I voted against the ballot language, my recollection, mm -hmm. against the ballot, the ballot language. That same night when it was clear that this was going forward, Mr. Crent, my recollection is, and you need to check the record for yourself, is that I voted in favor of letting the taxpayers and the voters vote for this because I did not want to take that right from the voters. That's my opinion. I was not in favor of it. I thought there was another way, but it's done. Let's close the book, bury the hatchet on this issue. 
But I would appreciate, if you're going to get up here and speak, that you do your research. But I'm sure it was an honest mistake. And for that, I forgive you. Thank you. Is there anyone else before we proceed on? I, I just want to say. Uh, Representative Kerwin. I want, people have talked about the Library of Tomorrow, the 21st Century Library. I just wanted to say a couple things, because I think during the community conversation, we had more than a dozen and all kinds of places. A majority of us did the um, Library Matters community conversations. And the mayor, I think you did the very first one at Emerald Lakes. So I mean, they were throughout the community, but it was so interesting. Kathy Russ, or staff, uh, informed those who gathered about the 21st century library we have right now, about the ability to download books, uh, about the many offerings that we have. And I would even suggest to Mr. Shepke, who came up and said, I just can't find this information, to make a visit to the library, get on the computer, look at the website. The city website was mentioned. Trust, I know, has something about Transit Center facts on their fact sheet, and you can find out the same information that is asked repeatedly here on the Trust website. It's a valuable uh, resource, but that's just one way of finding that. Don't know how to use the internet or how to get on? There's someone at the library who can help you with that, and the friends for, for a long time have actually been uh, paying for a job search for internet work for those of the community. And we thank, thank the friends uh, for that kind of work. But we're already in that mode. So Mr. Tegel, who spoke from the chamber, I know is looking forward to seeing a strategic plan. But please be aware, there's more at the library than just books and periodicals, some uh, CDs, and so on. There is the heart of the community, as was mentioned earlier. But we are well positioned to be that library of the future. And I look forward to seeing more of that and hearing more of that shared with our community going forward. Okay, uh, there are no postponed items uh, before us, so we'll go to regular business. And the first item in regular business, I believe some people are here on this item, is an application for transfer of a resort Class C license to Hot Rock uh, Pizza. And there's A, the transfer of the license, and then the agreement. Uh, Madam Mayor, may I uh, introduce myself after the council, or does, just to respond to any questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, you know, I did give the opportunity if anyone wanted to speak on an agenda item. We've changed our procedure. We Thank don't you. call you up on each thing. But if council has questions, they will ask. I will stay here. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. OK. Uh, council, do you have a resolution before you? I move council McGinnis? I move the resolution as printed both A and B. Second. Moved by Councilman McGinnis, seconded by Councilman Hauerlach, that we approve resolutions A and B. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilman Belchimini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Hauerlach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for being Thank available. You. Thank good luck to you all. Thank you. Uh, I-5 is the reconsideration and substitution of resolutions approving the industrial facilities tax exempt certificate and industrial facilities tax exemption certificate for plant rehabilitation for Meritor Heavy Vehicles LLC. Uh, is there any additional information that we need from staff uh, at this time? First will be the uh, resolution uh, reconsideration and then B is the um, reconsideration and then C is the proposed resolution to amend D is the proposed resolution to amend the reconsidered one yes Mr. Vicari uh, Madam Mayor I just wanted to mention that you could move and pass all four at one time and just, it's just a housekeeping matter uh, language that was required by the state and they are holding up their exemption until that language is added to the resolution okay that was going to be my question could we do all four okay thank you appreciate that would someone like to move the four uh, uh, Councilman Beltramini having read this I, I understand that it in essence includes the language that we did in, include in the later right. things. And therefore, I would move all items A through D of I-5 as printed. Support. Support. Moved by Councilman Beltramini, seconded by Councilman Fleming, that we approve the resolutions A, B, C, and D on this I-5 item as printed. Discussion? Madam Mayor. 
Yes, Councilwoman, did I'm here for Tim Kerwin. did appreciate uh, Mr. Lacari talking about this last uh, week or two weeks ago when we met and explaining that, that this was coming before us. So uh, thank you very much for doing that. Okay, the vote, Mrs. Bittner? Council Member Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? No. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Council Member McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Motion passes. I-6 is the contract modif uh, modification, the drive approach replacement section 35 water main replacement project. Someone want to move the resolution? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Slater? I'll move the resolution as printed. Support. Moved by Councilman Slater, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin that we approve the resolution as printed. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Council Member Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Council Member McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Council Member Beltramini? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, I-7 is the application for transfer of stock for A&S Babby Incorporated John's Party Store. A is the transfer of stock and B is the agreement. Madam Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin. I move A and B as presented. Second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin, seconded by Councilman Hauerlach that we approve resolutions A and B as printed. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner. Councilmember Hauerlach? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being available in case there were questions. Um, next, we have the consent agenda. And um, the Council, do you have any items that you wish to have uh, exempted? Mayor. Uh, Councilman Fleming? J4A. J4A. Any others? Okay, would you like to move the resolution? Sure. Resolve that Troy City Council hereby approves all items on the consent agenda as presented with the exception of J4A, which shall be considered after consent agenda items as printed. Second. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by Councilman Howardack, that we approve all the consent agenda items. Uh, with the exempt, uh, exception of J4A, which will be considered after this item. And I note that there is a change in the uh, yellow items on the table, folks, um, uh, on the minutes. And then J6, there's an item uh, before us, too. OK. Any other discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner, on all the items except J4A. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Council Member McGinnis? Yes. Council Member Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Council Member Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Howerlack? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, Councilman Fleming, you wanted uh, J4A? Yes, Mayor. Mm -hmm. And I'm just bringing this to the attention, and I see the Chief is here. And just to let the public know, because not everybody reads the minutes and so forth. But what we're doing here tonight is approving $1,025,345 for uh, two PUC fire apparatus pumpers, okay? And the chief has already sent a, a letter along with uh, our purchasing director explaining why we're doing this. But I think it might be well, if you don't mind, if the chief were just to elaborate what we're doing and explain what we're doing with the pumpers here. I'm all for it because I want to spend the money to make sure that our fire department volunteers have the best equipment available and, and, the, and we maintain our, our high safety record and low insurance costs. But I think in this environment, even though it's capital, it is budgeted and it's a multi-year program. But I'll let, let the chief, if you don't mind, Madam Mayor, if the city manager would allow, explain what we're doing here so that the public knows. That's fine. I think that it's important also the public know that um, the lifespan of some uh, fire apparatus uh, reaches a point where uh, it is not efficient nor uh, good for the safety of the uh, volunteers if we have uh, outdated equipment. So I appreciate, uh, Mr. Zerlag, if the chief can explain. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
Chief Nelson, welcome. Mayor, members of council, uh, give you a little bit of background. Our replacement plan for apparatus calls for keeping engines between 18 and 20 years. Uh, comparable cities keep their engines about 14 years. So we already push the envelope by keeping them an extra four to six years uh, beyond what other people do. Um, these particular engines, uh, rescue pumpers, uh, they are the first ones that respond to vehicle entrapments, which we respond to about two dozen to 30 a year. Uh, over the last 20 years, significant improvements have been made in cars. Uh, when these engines were bought, cars did not contain boron steel. They do now, so our ability to extricate people from cars uh, has had to keep up with the industry, the automobile industry, and how they protect people in cars. So we've had to make changes over the last 20 years and add things to these other engines. And whenever you do that, you compromise something. We compromise the electrical system by adding more equipment to them. We compromise uh, the hydraulic systems by attempting to run more than one tool, things like that. And these are all the exigencies of the job. Uh, you've heard of the golden hour. You have from the time of a crash, you have a 60 minutes from the time it occurs to the time that you are seen by a trauma surgeon. Well, if we can get you out of the car in 10 minutes, your chances are substantially better than if it takes us 45 or 50 minutes to get you out of the car because it's going to be a rapid ride to the hospital. So uh, these engines, uh, it's a whole new design. We bought two two years ago. We've evaluated them. They've worked out extremely well. One of the things we're attempting to do is standardize our apparatus because our people are much more fluid than they used to be. Our volunteers move from station to station. We have uh, multi-station runs where they have, where two stations respond together. And by having very similar apparatus with everything in the same place, it makes the job a lot easier. Uh, from a functionality standpoint, our apparatus, basically we look at two things. We look at the functionality side of it and we look at the reliability side. We can keep an engine running for probably 40 years, okay? The challenge is that when it breaks, you never know when it's gonna break, and when it does break is gonna be typically the time that you need it the most. So uh, we look at it from that standpoint, and then as we continue to do increased repairs, that we can keep that engine going by repairing it. However, it is not available to respond when it's being repaired. Pump overhauls can take two weeks, so that means the engine's down for two weeks, uh, and, and basically we have nothing to replace it. So uh, that's just a summary of why we're doing this. Um, it's, uh, we've, we've established a plan over the last 25 years of replacing the apparatus, and in order to keep our ISO rating and keep our performance where it is and where you'd like it to be, uh, we have to do this. Chief, thank you for an excellent explanation. That's what I was looking for. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Kerwin. Chief. I'm here to Pro Tem Kerwin. You talked about ex the life extension here. Some, some communities see 14 years. Would you say that that 20-year life extension comes in part because of the fleet service you receive through our, could you speak mm -hmm. to that a little bit? Certainly. Um, all of our apparatus goes up on a hoist every six months. Most communities don't even have a hoist that can pick up a fire truck. So uh, when we put them up on a hoist, what it allows us to do is be able to identify problem areas that you don't see if you're trying to crawl under it on a creeper, um, you know, with oil and, and water dripping in your face. Mm -hmm. So um, the fleet maintenance division does an excellent job of maintaining them. Uh, the other thing that we do is we manage run load to a degree. We don't send an engine on every EMS call in, in the community. Some departments choose to do that based on how they operate. Well, look at the number of miles and the number of runs that they make would uh, basically balance out why they have to retire them after 10 to 14 years. So again, this, this, has, this is in the budget. Yeah. This has been planned for. You have a cycle on how to do it. The life is extended through the uh, careful maintenance, which is done by the number one fleet in North America, I believe. And so again, this is carefully done. You recently had a, and excuse me if I, if I miss, don't speak the language, but a four alarm fire, did you not? 
basically it was a two alarm fire. Two alarm fire, right. and you had response from four. Right. We had we had basically three stations there. Uh, five engines, two ladder trucks, a couple of support vehicles, and 44 firefighters. Happened to be the day after the warmest day we've had um, all summer. And uh, uh, our firefighters made an excellent stop on that. We had the ability to lose um, 16 apartments. And basically we had significant damage to two, one of which was the fire, the, the apartment in which the fire originated which we didn't have much control over because it was, had extended in, outside of the apartment before we even got there. So there's some very good backup, backup material in, in this packet, which isn't long, including uh, gr uh, letters from grateful residents, including cats, uh, because I know that your volunteers went in to save some pets, which is very good. Was a, pl uh, a pumper used at this fire? We used uh, three pumpers and an aerial ladder. Well, thank heavens for that. So this is a good investment. I'll be happy to be voting yes. yes. <coughs> move the resolution. Would you like to move the resolution? Resolve that Troy City Council hereby approves J4A on the consent agenda as presented. Support. Moved by Councilman Fleming, seconded by uh, Councilwoman Beltrami that we approve J4A as presented. Discussion? The vote, Mrs. Bittner? Councilmember McGinnis? Yes. Slater? Yes. Mayor Schilling? Yes. Councilmember Beltramini? Yes. Fleming? Yes. Hoverlack? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Kerwin? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, next we have uh, council comments um, to come up. Council have any comments at this time? Madam Mayor? Uh, Councilman Beltramini? We, we had a lot of discussion about the library and even what a 21st century library should look like in in last month's, I'm finally getting around to read my magazines, American City and County Magazine, there was one of the short blurbs of information we got said that even today, with libraries constantly upgrading their technology, 74% of them have an insufficient number of public access computers to meet demand. And there is a 70% increase overall in public use of these computers. The good news is for Troy, 45% uh, of all libraries have an insufficient internet connection. And I remember about, it's been five or six years ago, mm -hmm. we put a T1 line in our library and at that point people said, oh, that's a waste, well, you can't do that. But I think that's why we have public computers that really do operate and people don't need to be on them all day. They can serve their 30 minutes, put in their job applications or find the information they need and then move on with their lives. And so we are, we are on our way to get there. And, and I will tell you, you've all heard the story of my friend at Pepperdine who was like, oh, are you really gonna close your library? She's thrilled that we are not closing our library. And I thank everybody for that. Now I need, think we need to move on as a community from this and move forward. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'd share that because I thought it was interesting. Thank you. We get uh, interesting information sent to uh, council members from uh, other communities and other uh, publications to us. And you're right, sometimes finding the right time to read it <laughs> for everything. Any other council comments? Uh, Councilman Fleming? Yes, yes. Mayor, thank you. Uh, We've talked in the past about transparency, and we've even talked about posting salary and benefits, and I think we've, we've made a step in the right direction. On two occasions, back in November of 2010, on the, the agenda, uh, Mr. Zerlag presented us with salary and fringe benefit calls for positions of city manager, city attorney, and all department directors, and that was a summary to the mayor and council. Also. If citizens would go to www.troymichigan.gov, click on special city information, budget and employee facts, there's an employee facts sheet there that shows certain things, talks about the ICMA study. It shows the positions and effective salary for 2011. And many people have seen this for the city manager and number of direct reports here, and some positions are, are vacant. And I think that's certainly a step in the right direction. It also includes some, some budget facts. But what I would like to see us do, and we've talked about this before, but it, we never make a decision on it, 
is to really be more transparent and post the salaries and benefits like the Troy School District does. And I know that's available on their website. I went on it today and pulled out the information and I have the format and so forth. Uh, if the city manager would like to see this, but I'm just asking the council. We, I think you can't be too transparent in this environment. And they have a format that's, that's very detailed. It does not list employee names, but it lists every position, every position within the city by, by title. And it puts the Medicare wages, the FICA tax, retirement, contract days, a daily rate that people, people make, the health, dental, life, long-term disability, additional fringes, and then a total compensation line. What I would like us to do is to do something similar. In addition, we could reflect the savings that we've already made. We have a budget and we've got savings from that budget already. Now, I know Mr. Zerlag is looking at me and saying, I don't have a finance manager, and you don't, and I appreciate that. But I think we need, we need to be uh, looking at this direction and, and set a goal to do this at some date in the future to be more transparent. We, we certainly done a lot more than we've had in the past, but I think we can improve, and I think using the model that the Troy School District has, and it's on their website, it's you know available. I can give you a copy of it, uh, Mr. Zerlag. And uh, I just want to know if the rest of the council would be um, acceptable to that. I think we just need a nod. I'm not moving a resolution. I'm just wanting to, this council to give the city manager some direction on Madam transparency. Madam Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pertem Kerwin. Um, I know that for some time in the future that would be good. I know right now the focus has to be on the dashboard and really come up with the dashboard because having that dashboard will put us eligible. We have a leaner staff at this point and there's some things that are going to have to take priority over others. As Councilmember Fleming says, maybe sometime down the road. Um, the majority of this <clears throat> council that is ultimately going to change, I think has six more meetings. We've asked for, for several workshops to be held on specific things. So I guess for these last six meetings or so, the plate's pretty full on some of the things we'd like to do, um, including, I, I want to commend the chief in the back um, on, the, on the use of volunteers in this community. We had uh, some time ago looked at our boards and committees. I know that the chief and uh, member of, members of his team have been going to the community and asking for volunteers to be eyes in the, in the community, be eyes in the neighborhood, let us know what's going on. That kind of use of volunteers I think would be important to come back for us. We've been doing a lot of the engagement sessions recently, um, <clears throat> both through the survey or through the community meetings or through email. And we saw with the whole group, 150 or so volunteers for the library, that people are interested in getting involved in their community. They understand that times are leaner. And their ability to come forward and donate their time is making a difference. So I think looking again at the boards of, and the committee structures and seeing how we can uh, work with our community volunteers now that we have depleted one in five uh, from staff to pick up some of the things that, that would make a difference in our community. Just as the Troy Historic Society does, just as our nature has, just as Friends of the Troy Public Library have. We need to be focusing on those things. So as a long-term piece, I can see working at that. We know, of course, the Troy School District responded because of legislation. We're facing a direction from the governor on the dashboard. That has to come now. Uh, I'd like to respond to uh, Councilman Fleming's request. I think it's important for uh, the citizenry to have accurate data uh, on um, all of our information. And I would hope that when they receive that accurate, up-to-date data, that they wouldn't use outdated data and present that as the latest information. I think that's where some of our problems have come about because people had old information and they didn't use the new information. Uh, several of us commented about that page on the website, the first one uh, la at the last meeting about that that was uh, updated uh, information that's there. And that's one of the reasons why I was encouraging people tonight to go to the city website 
get information, and if they have questions about certain things, to ask staff, and as they have, you know, always responded to a citizen request on something, whether it's small or large, uh, but then also to, uh, when they're providing that information then to others, that they do it in an accurate fashion. I think that that would help all of us. Uh, Mr. Zerley, did you want to respond? I see you nodding, but I don't well, know if I, you're waiting for all of us. Or we're all very good uh, comments, and we'll do what, what we need to do to uh, uh, give City Council a comfort level in all decisions that you make. And that's a general statement. A specific statement is that uh, we now essentially have five divisions. I used to call them cluster, but there's a bad connotation for the term cluster, so I now call them five, five divisions. And the, uh, the fire division essentially is, is finished. It's restructured. And with the volunteers that we have, you can't beat the way that we are structured in terms of the cost that we pay against the service that we receive. Uh, we then have a uh, police department division. And uh, ICMA made a slew of recommendations that we are beginning to, to implement. We started doing that. We're going to continue on doing that. The economic and community development division uh, which is uh, under Mark Miller. Uh, essentially, if you take a look at where we were against what we're doing in that division, that is uh, the most evolved. Uh, we went from essentially about 24 or 25 full-time people in the building inspection department to having to be totally privatized. We are erasing a $5 million uh, deficit uh, from the general fund uh, because of the cost savings that we are realizing with the building inspection department. We have uh, laid off 50% of the engineering department to now have the optimum blend of both in-house and uh, outside consultants for our capital planning, our specification development, our inspection and contract management. The plan department has been uh, reduced by 60%. We now have two full-time people and a consultant that we use, uh, contrary to some uh, comments, the consultant that we use saves money compared to the full-time people that we had in the past. The Recreation Division is also under uh, 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 Mark Miller now. We've had to reduce the number of staff as well as programming, but we no longer have a general fund subsidy uh, for that division. I'm also, you know, it was also mentioned that uh, uh, we have the uh, Nature Center and the Troy Historical, Mu Troy Historical Museum. That's also under community and economic development because those are both components that assist in having a community that people want to live and work here. Uh, and they're essentially on their own with no subsidy. We have uh, the library, fortunately, which uh, has been approved by the voters. And what we're doing there, that's our next big project. And I'm sorry for the long answer. But I want to give you a, an update as well. And I've been meeting uh, primarily with uh, uh, Mark Miller, uh, Kathy Russ, and Tom Darling, uh, who essentially is under contract and is a hybrid uh, finance director controller for us uh, for the time being, to essentially get us a budget uh, for council review and approval. Uh, we're shooting, I think, for September 19th, is it, Mark? Uh, that's an aggressive schedule because we have to have a multi-year budget and a five-year forecast uh, to be commensurate with the five-year uh, issue that we have at 0.7 mills, we have to make sure that because our revenue stream is still declining, uh, even though the 0.7 mills are constant, the base is still going to decline for the next several years. And so we don't want to have a situation where we give you a large budget the first year and then have to have cutbacks mm -hmm. in subsequent years. So we want to have a fund balance and plan that out over five years. It's easy for me to say it's harder to actually achieve with programming. And from there, we're going to evolve and bring in other stakeholders on a state-of-the-art uh, library. Uh, but first, we have to get the budget going and, 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 and reconstruct what we had. And, and uh, uh, we've been deconstructing the organization for the past two and a half years. It's fun to actually reconstruct a component thereof. So that issue essentially is, is taken care of. In addition, and staying on the economic and community uh, service area, in about uh, it's a two weeks, Mark, August 29th? Uh, I met with uh, Mark Miller and uh, uh, our consultant, uh, Dick Carlisle. And we're going to give an update on, on what's <coughs> called economic gardening, what we're doing in that regard. We initially thought that it would be great to have regional economic development, 
not so much in terms of attracting uh, businesses to come in, but in terms of retention and growth <coughs> that are already here. I approached.